from this uh, sessions and tomorrow evening also. So right now, let's. Uh, any 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 question for a while before we will. I I would like to start with the facilitator manual, uh, and uh, I think that's that's only what what we can take for tonight the facilitator manual, and we hope to take the the two manuals tomorrow evening. Uh, the is the group leaders and the instructors, but for tonight the the facilitator manual. But uh, before going to that. Uh, do you have any uh, questions or clarifications? Yes, just let me know so I, I can. Why you need to go through the facilitator manual first? First, uh, uh, there's no rule about, about that. We can, we can. I, I, I'm just thinking because uh, I usually do that. Uh, the group leaders and the instructors, uh, the instructor manual, I usually uh, um, present them side by side because there is a working, uh, there's a dynamic of the working of the group leaders and the instructor. To me, uh, the success of the Operation Solid Lives rests mainly on the group leaders and the instructor. Because the facilitator is just like a, you know, just, just doing the facilitating. Um, we, we will we'll, uh, we'll see. So, is it okay to start with facilitator manual or uh, you want to start with the instructor? No, I thought there must be a reason. <laughs> ah, no, no. It's just a... Uh, <laughs> Uh, kind of uh, preference. <laughs> okay, so if you don't have any other question, uh, we can proceed to facilitate the manual. Let me see. So question on on discipleship. Uh, no question about discipleship. We all believe that discipleship must be done. Not only must be done, but uh, can be done. Do you all believe that discipleship can be done? Yes, and uh, in in the Philippines we have this uh, body of churches we call the, the Philippine Council of Evangelical Churches. Um, they are now into uh, putting emphasis also of the disciples disciple maker training because we have so many trainings on discipleship, but we have only few trainings on disciple maker disciple makers and so uh, they are now concentrating into that uh, that uh, uh, there must be a disciple makers training also what is good in OSL is that in OSL it is uh, all together simultaneous side by side you have the disciples which are the students and you have the disciple makers which are the, the, the leaders the leadership of OSL now, uh, in, in the church, uh, because OSL is a church-based discipleship system, it should be a church-based. It cannot uh, stay long among the pastors. Because what we did in the Philippines, we started, as I told you, we started with the pastors first. We gathered all the pastors in one place, and we run the level one class. Level one class is four weeks long. Uh, one month, four weeks. That's level one. And uh, uh, every st the, the students must must finish that four weeks uh, sessions to be able to graduate the level one of Operation Solid Life. So what we did in Metro Manila was to gather first all the pastors together with uh, some of these. Uh, pastors and pastors, the, the district supervisors, and uh, we run the level one, four weeks. So once a week, we gather together for, before it was three hours. So once a week, we gather together for three hours, three hours, and then go home after that, and then come back again for the next week for another three hours. And that's for four, uh, 
consecutive uh, weeks. And the reason for that is that so that the pastor would have a free taste of how it is going to take. And uh, after that, we encourage them to start to their local churches for their members, bats by bats. But uh, not everybody was able to start in the local churches because other pastors uh, would like to proceed to the next level. They were waiting and they were looking for the level two because they have experienced really some uh, wonderful changes in, in level one. They wanted to have a taste of level two because level two is another set of teachings and uh, uh, process. And also while waiting for the level two, the dead churches are being stuck, stuck up. Uh, the, the congregations were waiting also for the level one. So, for, but those who proceeded uh, with uh, to their local churches started already the level one. So we, we don't want that this, of course you start with the pastors, you gather all the pastors and start level one, but we don't want for, for, the, for this uh, system to be stuck up among the pastors. And uh, we, 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 the, the, the churches will wait for all the pastors to graduate up to level five. Before, it, before the church members can, can have it, uh, I think uh, that should not be the... Because the pastor can join in their congregation in, into the next higher levels. So it's, you, only need to, you only need to have uh, a taste of it. Just level one for me is enough. If, but if you really would like to insist, you can go to level two. But after that, if you like the level 3, you, you go level 3 with your members and church leaders so that your church can proceed with the discipleship system. Okay? So that's, that's the case. Now, facilitator manual. This, this is the first uh, uh, leader that uh, we will be uh, discussing. Facilitator functions as the administrative lead for a particular class of OSL. So, may, may, uh, please be informed that an OSL is a class by class um, what? group of students. Uh, level one class. Okay? And level two class or level three class. So it's it, it's it. now a facilitator functions as function as the administrative lead of a particular class, not for the entire classes, but only for a particular class. So if you have a level one class, you need a facilitator for that. If you have a level two class, you need a facilitator for that level two class. For example, if you have two two batches of level one, the same level one classes, two batches, you need facilitator for each, for each class, for each batch. So meaning to say, a facilitator is required in every class of students. Okay? It is recommended that classes over 30 students should have an assistant. It's up to the, to the pastor or to the OSL program coordinator if uh, they would uh, follow that suggestion. But that's only a suggestion or recommendation. The 30 students, the, the facilitator for the 30 students must have an assistant. Uh, in that way, you can also be mentoring of a future class facilitator as well. So this is good time to a less experienced facilitator shadow the more experienced or on the job training. So it's kind of reproducing facilitators. Now, summary of responsibilities of a class facilitator. Prepare, teacher, 
group leader, facilitator, and student materials. So that's number one. The, the role or the responsibility of the facilitator is to make sure that all the materials needed, like this one, are being provided to uh, those who need materials, like the teacher of the class need materials. The group leaders of, of, uh, of uh, groups of, of students, there is a group leader of each group, they need materials. So the facilitator should provide and should prepare. Okay, and also the student materials. The student materials is the one that you have right now, the booklet and the DVD. The, the DVD is uh, the teachings, powerful teachings of Pastor Jerry Derman uh, on the series of being right with God. It's really powerful, life-changing teachings. Even pastors can, you know, uh, benefit from that. And so that's the that's the packet or that's the set of materials for the students. So the, the facilitator should prepare for that. And also another responsibility of the facilitator facilitator is to organize student records and the distribution of student materials at the orientation time. As I mentioned before that a uh, while ago that there will be a student orientation before running the class. Always an orientation uh, for the students. And in that orientation time, thus the facilitator should provide the materials or distribute the materials and also make sure that every student is enrolled and uh, listed in the list of students. So there's a record of students. There is enrollment uh, form. All of the forms are provided. I, I brought some of the samples uh, in, in a DVD already. So I, I give it to Wiley. In a DVD, all of the forms and templates there, the templates for certificates of during the graduation, and uh, the forms for enrollment, the attendance tracking, the registration uh, table, it's all there in, in that DVD. So another thing, uh, bullet number three, the responsibility of facilitator plan and make preparations for the graduation. So the facilitator is in charge of, uh, of planning for the graduation. At the end of four weeks uh, for uh, level one class, there will be graduation. And uh, it is expected that the facilitator should arrange on how the graduation will uh, uh, take place. So like preparing the certificates for each of the student and uh, also um, prepare the program, short program on how to conduct the graduation. If there's a need for you know eating together and for everyone to bring some food, so that's the facilitator's responsibility to, to coordinate with each and everyone. Another thing is maintain all students' records like registration, attendance, and dropouts. Uh, even dropouts, that should be recorded. Uh, we have forms uh, given to the group leader for every dropout student. There will be dropouts also because those who are not ready yet or those who have conflicts with their schedules, they were not able to prepare and anticipate that it's a consecutive state, consecutive and no absent, no late uh, 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 kind of thing. And so, if they struggle with that, they might they might uh, say that uh, okay, I'll be I'll just come back next next uh, next uh, level one. So that student might drop out, and his name or her name should be recorded in the drop out forms. Uh, by the group leader and submitted to the facilitator. So the facilitator has all the documents and all the records, the dropouts, the attendance, and the registration. And also report all class records to the program administrator or the pastor. So a facilitator is under, the facilitator is under to a program, OSL program coordinator or director. So in a local church setting, there must be an OSL director or OSL uh, 
coordinator or whatever title you would like to, to give. Uh, and uh, he is responsible of the entire process and all of this leadership are under him. So the facilitator should be reporting to that overall coordinator of OSL or program director of OSL. That can be the pastor also. If, so, you so that's the summary of responsibilities. Now let's look at the before class. Before class. This means uh, uh, before starting the class of level one, uh, these are the materials that the facilitator should prepare. The teacher's orientation guide. Uh, all of these are provided. If you, it's already in the DVD also. I, 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 I wrote so, the sample of those. Facilitator binder, group leader, folder, folders, student materials. Page number two, let's uh, proceed to the orientation day. Okay, um, when, when is the orientation day take place? Before you start with your four weeks, because as I said, uh, level one is four weeks, right? Four weeks. So before the start, the, the counting, the start of counting of your four weeks, there must be an orientation. Let's say if your if your first day of of uh, the uh, what? Let's say if your first day is on Monday, the orientation must be done prior to that, either Saturday or Sunday. Orientation for the students. Okay. Before, before the counting of your first day. So, during the ordain orientation day, the facilitator hand out the orientation guide to the teacher because it will be the teacher who will conduct the orientation. Now, um, now during the orientation day, the, the teacher will be using this one. Okay, if you notice, uh, because you will be orienting your students on how to use this booklet, booklet, and then also the DVD. And so the, the teacher will be using this one in the orientation. You, the, the teacher will start from page one, the welcome to Operation Solid Light. So in, in, in that orientation day, the teacher will stand and we, he would uh, he would or she would welcome all the students to the operation to the program to the system operation solid light and uh, you as a, as a teacher you might read this or you just summarize this uh, what is important is that you are able to appreciate welcome and uh, let all the students feel that they are important that uh, that let you you will let every students know that you are as excited as they are if not more excited than they are that's the role of the teacher in orientation day you you must uh, allow the students to feel that uh, that you are excited too of their decision to undergo this process of disciple making so you would welcome them to the program the next after that you would welcome them on page four. You will welcome them to level one. Okay, that's in page four. So as, as the teacher, in, in the orientation day, you will welcome them to the level one. So there's a welcome uh, script for each level. Level two, level three. But for level one class, you only use this page four. So there's, there's two, there are two welcomes here. The welcome of the students to the Operation Solid Lives and the welcome of the students to a particular level, level one class. Okay? And then after that, you proceed to the disciplines or the, the, the very things that they need to adjust and to, to perform. So that would be, uh, that is uh, on on uh, uh, the disciplines, page 10, 10 up to page 13. 
So you will, you, as, as, as the teacher, you will, uh, you will discuss that. You will present that, those disciplines. And then you, you present or you teach them how to do the journaling. That's all there. And to the listening of the faith builders and uh, to the making of notes. And where to find the Bible reading plan that's in the back of the book, booklet. And how to, to do their daily journaling. Their soap, what we call soap, uh, scripture, observation, application, and prayer. Uh, that's a, a daily, a, a, day, a daily, a daily habit that should be done by every student. So you you do that as a teacher. Now it is the role of the facilitator to provide to the teacher all the needed materials. So uh, also the facilitator prepare the registration table there should be a registration table if this is a class this is the classroom or this is the class uh, venue at the entrance there should be a registration table where attendance tracking form are in are there or is there the attendance tracking form and there should be somebody checking the arrival of each each student marking them late if they arrive late and checking them on time if they arrive on time so there's a, a, a attendance tracking person. And so the, the, the form is there provided by uh, the facilitator. So the facilitator, the facilitator should, should make sure that this registration table is uh, uh, filled with these uh, needed materials. Tracking form, name tags, if you need the uh, name tags, uh, the name tag should be there. And after the class, should be surrendered back to the registration table. Uh, if we don't suggest that the name tag should be taken home because the tendency is they, they will not bring that back on the next uh, meeting. So they just surrender that at the regist registration table. The faith builder uh, download instructions, if, uh, if that is needed, that should be there. Accepted movie guide, uh, student information cards, student workbooks. That is what, this is, the booklet is the student workbooks. The pens. Uh, a, a faith builders audio, audio that's the DVD and journal notebooks. So these are the, the things that should be there in the registration table. And next, as each student comes in, as each student comes in, add each student to an attendance tracking form, just as I said, so they uh, check in. Make and give each student an name tag, give each student uh, student workbook, faith builder, uh, audio, yeah, the, the pen if, uh, they, if they need. And then assigning students to groups. So it should be the facilitator who would uh, assign uh, or uh, help the students find their own group area. Because uh, when they when they arrive uh, in the next in the next meeting after the orientation, then one week will pass and then they will come back for the next meeting. And they will come in, the students will come in, and the arrangement is group by grouping. So the facilitator should be able to help them find their own group rotation. That's what it means there. Okay? Assigning of students to, to groups. During week, weekly sessions, the classroom setup it's the responsibility of the facilitator that the technical uh, uh, needs are provided like the microphones, the, the projector, speakers, okay, and that, that should be uh, uh, taken care of by the facilitator. And also the seating uh, arrangement of each group, the podium, and water bottle for class teacher. Okay. Registration. Next page. Page three. Uh, registration. Set up the student's registration table with the following item. Okay. We mentioned that already. Okay. Session schedule. Okay. It's the role of the, the facilitator to make sure that the session is starts on time and ends on time. So he is a kind of uh, timekeeper, the facilitator. Timekeeper, announcer, reminders of all the necessary uh, uh, reminders. Okay, uh, next is report.
reporting class statistics possible announcements always from the front of the class so it's 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 it's, it's uh, stated here and clarified that uh, every time the, the facilitator would make an announcement it should be in front of the class okay and uh, these are the samples of announcement like uh, during the class cell phones must be off or in silent mode like that okay so uh, I, I i think you 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 have uh, understood what 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 this uh, facilitator role is all about okay well th there is a last uh, page which is the registration team guidelines so if you have if the facilitator assigns somebody to be the registration personnel or person uh, this this uh, guidelines should be discussed with the registration personnel so this is what we call, this is what we call registration team guidelines so they are uh, encouraged to be always reminded that we put people first before the task so meaning the registration personnel should be you know, uh, uh, welcoming all the students warmly and they should attend to the people then the first before the task so that's so it's the role of the facilitator to orient the registration person at the table using this uh, one page uh, guidelines okay um any any point of clarification and questions okay Yeah, yeah. The, the, the grouping of the students must be done during the orientation day, uh, because the next, the, the next, uh, the next meeting, uh, they should all already have their uh, own groups, and the set, the setting arrangement of the chairs is, is uh, by grouping. So, uh, the question, how you group the students? The guidelines, according uh, to the guidelines of the OSL, that especially in level one class the, the grouping should be gender specific meaning girls all girls same sex all boys uh, that's the idea and that's the recommendation but if there are you know some excess uh, the next the next uh, recommendation is gender balance let's say for example you have excess of two men and two ladies so they can be group as one group okay and that is gender balance what we call gender balance it should be equal number of both uh, genders and uh, i think uh, friends uh, best friends if they, it's good if they can be separated i don't know but uh, the, the gender uh, uh, guidelines is very specific Uh, I believe so. Uh, I, I, as much as possible, if the, the couple can be, I don't know what's the explanation of that. Uh, they, they might be, what, copying each other? <laughs> um, that's, the, that's the suggestion, if they can be you know, separate, uh, separated. Uh, uh, in, in a group, the couple and best friends. Uh, I think uh, maybe for for a maximum, you know, uh, uh, impact of the process, so that there's no uh, uh, I don't know uh, what's what's the problem if you're together in a group. <laughs> uh, I, I I think uh, it, it depends on you know. Uh, the uh, if it's 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 if there's a cultural uh, problem with that, uh, uh, but in the Philippines we we also follow that kind of guidelines. But there are cases that we cannot uh, really separate them. They they request to be together. So okay, go ahead. 
just be together. No problem. We're not going to stick on these kinds of things. Okay, what else? Uh, what other uh, clarifications? Explanation to be attract the student. Attract the student. You mean uh, encourage the students? Yeah. How to invite yeah. the students to, yeah. to class? Oh, sure. Ah, okay. So the, the question is, before the, there is a class first. Yeah, uh, yeah this is uh, uh, what we do, uh, what we did, uh, and, and it, it's in the in the in the guidelines also. Before you start classes of OSL, there must be a kick off event, meaning a vision casting, a promotion. Uh, that there will be a discipleship program. So you promote first OSL and you highlight OSL as something that is uh, something that is uh, you know uh, attractive, something that is uh, really badly needed, something that is uh, really yeah, God, it's, it's really God's will but it's, you, you have to really promote OSL in such a way that everyone would uh, encouraged and would uh, really make their way to enrolling OSL. So there must be a kind of promotion or you know, a kick-off event or what. We, we, there's a, we provide also the promo promotional materials like video. You can, you can play the video, uh, in uh, promotional video. And also there's a brochure that can be distributed. But what is important is that the church itself will promote as if the church really is into it and that the church believes that this is something that must be done and should be done so that kind of thing and after that you you have you know enrollments or uh, you know listing of students who are interested you get their names and uh, you schedule a class orientation for that when you're talking about groups, you're talking about groups in, within a class, is that right? Yes, sir. The class will be divided into several groups. Okay. The ratio is... Is there is, a number that should go in each group then? Uh, the ratio is uh, for one, uh, one, one leader is four members. One is to four. So five? Five, all in all. So one leader is to four students. That's the idea. Uh, if you are lacking of group leaders, uh, five can be accommodated, but not more than five. Okay, but the the recommended is four. One group leader for students. So you really have to uh, to 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 identify. You really need to identify first. If you have a enroll list of let's say twenty students you will be needing five group leaders. So you, you must select from among your leaders or members who are, who are willing to be trained because there will be a training on how to be a group leader. So you identify those individuals that can be chosen as group leaders and you provide that training. You train them using the manual. And after that, you appoint them as group leaders. That is the recommendation and that is the guidelines. That those leading the groups must be ahead of the students in terms of level. If they are leading as level one students, group leaders should must have been graduated already from that level. So the problem, the problem is this. At the beginning, where do you get uh, graduates of level one? Uh, that's what we struggled also in, uh, in the Philippines. But what we did is that uh, there's no other way but uh, at the beginning, this is only happens uh, at, at first level one 
that your group leaders are also students at the same time. Because you don't have graduates of level 1 yet. So you will be assigning, just for the very beginning, you will be assigning group leaders who are not graduate of level 1. But as students at the same time. So they will be functioning as dual function. A student and at the same time a group leader. Uh, because you are, we are having the, since you are starting the, 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 the first course of the level one, so as you say, there are no leaders yet. So, since you need to have a leader in each group, so can we select a leader or someone more senior among the group to be the leader? The, the idea is this, that you select, that you select first leader, group leaders, before assigning and before divide, dividing into groups. On which the leaders are separate from the class uh, the members. They are part of the, the the leaders are the leaders are are part of the of the, the leader is, is part of the group. <coughs> but you, I mean you you cannot divide I mean you divide the group first. I you you group the students